I'm here today to share my take on the famous Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York City. And if you haven't had the chance to visit in person, the building is on Fifth Avenue um, and 89th Street in Upper Manhattan and celebrated its 60th anniversary just last year. It was designated a historic landmark in 1990 and one of the eight Frank Lloyd Wright buildings inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 2019. Frank Lloyd Wright once described Manhattan as a vast prison with glass fronts, so it was no surprise that he chose a site directly across from Central Park, which is basically as close to nature as one gets in New York City. When you first enter the building, your vision is drawn immediately upwards six stories or 97 feet in the air to the top of the atrium. From the main floor rotunda, you can see the curve of the continuous spiral and feel the warmth of the natural light radiating from the dome skylight, which is shaped like an oculus with intersecting lines and repeated geometric shapes. Throughout the building, Wright brings nature inside through custom designed planters and the warm ivory materials such as the terrazzo floor that you see here. And through these materials, Guggenheim challenges the dominance of the vertical skyscraper and instead suggests that space can flow horizontally and the building can be permeable, supporting Wright's vision of organic architecture or form and function as one. Throughout the building, geometry guides the eye and helps the visitor circulate through the space. In 1912, Wright remarked, quote, certain geometric forms have come to symbolize for us and potently to suggest certain human ideas, moods, and sentiments. For instance, the circle infinity and the triangle structural unity. Geometric forms in the Guggenheim create a framework not only for looking at nature, but also for the artwork within. The repeated forms pictured here in our cafe on the third floor shows semicircles and vertical lines, which are almost like abstract versions of the trees in Central Park outside. In fact, the spiraling ramp itself almost grows organically from the floor, such as a spine stretching out from its roots. And it mimics the natural growth of things that we see outside. This philosophy of organic design underlines the potential for unity between the beholder, the artwork, and the architecture. In this Frank Lloyd Wright drawing titled The Reception, the architect depicts the Guggenheim as a really lively social space. You'll see there are some people looking at artwork on the walls, but some people also looking out and just people watching. Um, and in this, Wright really suggests that this is a temple not only to art, but the human spirit as well. I've been an art educator at the Guggenheim for over a decade, and I'm here with some two-year-olds and their families. And I've introduced audiences of all ages to the originality of the museum's design. What seems simple at first is actually complex through repetition. So what happens when a straight line meets a curved line and what happens when a circle intersects a square? These moments are experienced only when moving through the Guggenheim. As you walk up the court of a mile long ramp, you start to notice the rhythm of the webbed walls, which extend vertically from the ceiling all the way down to the ground floor. These webbed walls act as the cantilevered support system for the heavy ramps and creates intimate spaces for viewing art. Wright wanted pictures to be framed as a feature of the architecture, almost like a jewel as a signet in a ring. The architecture complements Solomon R. Guggenheim's fascination with non-objective paintings or abstract art, such as the series titled Alterpieces by Hemla af Klint, who's a Swedish painter. Just as artists were seeking new forms of expression in the 20th century, architects were also experimenting with new materials. To create the spiral, Wright used concrete for its dual properties of lightness and strength. In these Guggenheim archival photos, you can see the wooden scaffolding around the exterior walls, which supported the gun sprayed concrete or the gunite used to create the Guggenheim's finished form. Here you'll see Wright with the general contractor for the project, George Cohen. Um, and you'll see the Guggenheim on the right hand side on opening day, which was October 21st, 1959. On opening day, over 10,000 people lined up to be the first to visit the museum, and the cost of admission was only 50 cents. Since its opening day, the museum and our understanding of form and function has continued to evolve. As you see here with these two canvas paintings suspended by makeshift rods, the unique shape of the building demands unique solutions to install and exhibit artwork, as well as house the offices for the museum staff that work there. A central question remains, as our museum's art collection expands, will the architecture respond and adapt with it? 
Many artists, architects, and designers have come up with innovative solutions that challenge and expand our understanding of the building. This image here shows a salon style display in our high gallery, which is a double height exhibition space. Here's a more dramatic site-specific installation by Chinese artist Sai Guo Cheng, which is the first exhibition I ever saw at the Guggenheim. And it shows nine cars suspended from the ceiling um, and it's held at various angles by cables, almost as if there's a time lapse of a car exploding in midair. The central void created by the circular architecture creates an evocative blank canvas to reimagine in ways that Wright could have never anticipated. In this 1992 exhibition titled Art of the Century, American artist Dan Flavin transforms the central space with halos of pink, blue, green, yellow, and ultraviolet fluorescent lights. For a solo exhibition in 2013, American artist James Terrell created an elaborate site-specific installation with a five-tier conical structure with LED lights programmed to change on a chromatic spectrum. The concentric pattern echoes the Guggenheim ramps and invites visitors to contemplate their perception of light and space. Fast forward to 2020, and we have Dutch architect Ram Koolhaas and collaborators on view at the Guggenheim, and in direct dialogue with Wright's visionary perspective on man's connection to nature. This current exhibition titled Countryside, the Future presents research on radical changes in the field of architecture due to climate change, migration, urban farming, and other relevant architectural issues. So we return to the iconic image of the Guggenheim. This last slide shows drawings submitted to Instagram for hashtag Frank Lloyd Wright Fridays. We began with one man's vision of what a building and a museum could be and end with many perspectives on how architecture can connect audiences and capture imaginations throughout the world. Wow. Thank you.